Welcome to Opinion Havers, a movie podcast for fans of the hit 1994 cartoon Gargoyles. I'm Tyler. And I'm Cody. Cody, what did we watch? We watched Aaron Eckhart's masterpiece, I, Frankenstein. Yeah, we did. Do you want to try uh, Let me tell you. Yeah. I was a gargoyles boy. Yeah, you I were. watched it. I grew up on it. There were gargoyles. I loved it. Did you ever play? Well, I'll say this. A few weeks, not a few weeks ago. Last year, Bailey and I, it's on Disney Plus. So Bailey and I hopped it back into it. We watched the first four episodes. We were like, that's enough. <laughs> it was all right. I mean, it was interesting, you know? Here's my question to you, though. Did you ever play? I want to say it was on Sega. I mean, it was probably on all the systems at the time. The old 90s Gargoyles video game. Yeah, the one that was, like, stupidly hard. Yeah. (laughs) It was a game made for people, you know, like, six and eight and ten-year-olds to watch the Gargoyle show. It was crazy hard. Looked cool, though. Yeah, it was like... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, what, what's the one that's super, Lion King or Aladdin or something that's like, no, it's that kind yeah. of game. Yeah. <sighs> Sneeze. Yeah. Don't, don't draw attention like to the, it. It was like the, in the era of like the Metroid and the Castlevania games. You know, these things are like, oh, this is, this is like a game for grownups, you know? Yeah. And you teenagers. Can... This is not like a children, a child's game. It's very much, you're right, there's very much them copying Castlevania, but not like being as good as making games yeah so uh they're like oh yeah that's cool they did the stuff like the stage and then you go back through the stage upside down let's do that and they're like cool should we make a stage that's good to go backwards upside down no <laughs> they do that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah it's good stuff it was good times though this is our childhood oh, yeah. so that means it's the best mm-hmm. cody i got your email here what? <laughs> I, yeah, it just came it? through. It just came through, oh. so I'm gonna need you to g- take over the podcast for the next while while I read through your email. Stop! <laughs> Please don't read through my ten page <laughs> assignment from class. Uh, so, Tyler, do you want to just do you want to spill your guts about this movie? Or what, first what, off, what Cody, wanna, where do you want to take I'm, us? No, hold your horses there, boy. I need you to explain the movie to me, Cody. Okay. I've never seen this movie before. All right. I'll tell you all about it. So, this movie is essentially uh, a sequel to one of my very favorite books, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This movie poses the question, what happens to Frankenstein's monster? after the events of the book Frankenstein. And uh, the answer to that question is gargoyles, demons, and uh, uh, holy wars, and uh, Frankenstein's right there in the mix. Is he going to side with? Who's he going to side with, you know? Bill Nye is there. That one lady, is, the lady from Lord of the Rings is there. And who who knows, you know? Will they unlock the secrets of Frankenstein's monster and immortality? Oh, boy. I don't know. You tell me. Immortality, creation of life, whatever, man. You know? It's a sequel. Look. <laughs> it's it's an action movie fantasy sequel to the greatest horror novel ever written. Is that better? Do you like that? Here's what Here's what makes me mad about this movie. <laughs> It is, of all the adaptations I've seen of Frankenstein, this is the first one that's like, we're going to acknowledge basically everything that happens in the book and, like, kind of actually go off of that. Because normally they go off of the old Boris Karloff movie, which is fine, but that movie's kind of like, let's just take the skeleton of Frankenstein and ignore all the fleshy bits, you know? Let's just kind of do our own thing with it. Let's make him green. This will be fun, you know? Mm -hmm. And this one's like, no, no. We're going to actually... They were reasonably faithful to the book what is that about they had no business doing that well cody i'll blow your mind right now with this is also based on a book of sorts no it's based on a is based on a graphic novel 
that oh. it was incredibly popular in its day. And uh, oh. so that it still goes on. Like, it's there's a lot of source material for them to have made several books about, or several movies about the books. So I think I that's why it's so faithful, because it's like the graphic novel is very faithful. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. Makes me mad. Wow. So that's what the movie's about. So you loved it. Um, I don't know. No. <laughs> I, uh, look, this is not for me. This is you. This is my gift to you, is that I watch this for you, okay? I'm here. I'm, isn't that enough? Is it not enough that I'm here and I watch this movie? I mean, it did take us what felt like years to get back to the Tyler's Trash series. This mm. being the spiritual second episode of it being that, doc- that Dracula Untold is the first. Mm. Right? Yeah. So this being the movie that made Legendary start to think, wait a second, we could do something here. Mm. And then they mm-hmm. were cowards and made a bad mummy movie. Oh yeah. So all right, all right. So you want to? You got things to say, I'm sure. Yeah. Do you got things? Do you want to? Do you have things written down, or are they just locked up in your brain hole? <laughs> both. You know, I got my brain hole. My brain hole's full. My page is full. I got both. I'll come at you. I'll come at your brain hole first, page first, whatever you want. I got it. All right. If it if it if it's all right with you, Cody, I would like you to. Everybody just kind of walks everywhere, don't they? Just like, to stand out here in this field, get swooped up, get swooped up with by these gargoyles, Cody. We're gonna get swooped up by gargoyles. <laughs> we're gonna fly into Spoiler yeah. Town. As we're flying into Spoiler Town, Cody, if it, if you know, I'm looking at your face. I'm remembering the page and a half of notes or whatever you told me you took. Do you want to go first so that I can <clears throat> rebut? So I can re your butt. All right, your buttle. Yeah, I can, look. You can try to butt it. You can try to rebut it. You, you will. You may try. All right? I will That's refute you. everything. I will die on this hill, Cody. Not as much. Okay, I'm not. You know, you know. I will though. It's a good movie, Cody. It's Tyler's mm. trash. Mm. All right, fine. You All right. you got five minutes to convince me it's not. I'm ready. Here's the thing. This is when you know it's not a good movie. Bailey was like bored by the end. She's like, that wasn't good. <laughs> like she said it, all right? I didn't have to say it. She said it. And that's when you know. She liked Jupiter Ascending. She thought it was an amazing movie, okay? And she couldn't get through this guy, all right? That's the level we're working on. It wasn't. Do I admire? Look, Frankenstein is one of my favorite books of all time. Like for years, I said it was my favorite book. It might still be my favorite. Great book. And it's the perfect hipster book because everything everyone knows about Frankenstein is not really faithful to the book. So it's the perfect hipster book to be like, well, actually, um, his name is not Frankenstein. It's from his book. Well, in the book, you know, you, there's all sorts of things you can bring up. And that's great. It's good for being a hipster because you can uh, get your jollies off just complaining to people about how nothing is as good as the book. All right. It's the great. It's the OG. This is the OG. I read the book and it was better than the movie. All right. That's what Frankenstein is. And this one is like, yeah, we're going to do that. My question is, uh, th- okay, first first thought, this is a movie full of TV actors. Like, I look at all these actors, right? I get Aaron Eckhart, no. The lady from Lord of the Rings, no. And Bill Nye, no. But everybody else looks like, no, nah, this is a TV actor. This is someone who should have been in, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the vampire one? Vampire Secrets. Not True Blood. It's, like, not as good as True Blood, like, Vampire Diaries, <laughs> I think it's literally called Vampire Diaries. <laughs> like, they all look like they came out of Vampire Diaries. All right, that's the caliber we're working with. That's where we're at, okay? That's the first thing. Number two, that's the whole thing, right? They show up, they're like, hey, Frankenstein's monster, what's up? These demons are after you. I don't know what's up, but we killed demons, so do you want to team up with the gargs, with these gargoyles? We're the goyles, do you want to come with us? And he's like... Probably not, but they still get him, you know. And then he lives on for hundreds of years more. 
Then he gets mad at him. Anyway, the Goyles pick him up again. They're like, hey, man, remember us? He's like, kind of. So they bring him, and they're like, all right, here's here's our secret mark. You can kill anything as long as your weapon has our secret mark or the hood, the gargs, secret garg mark. All right, that's what they say. And literally, and they're like, all right, mm, pick a weapon. There's a room full of weapons, <laughs> and he grabs two sticks, and they're like, not those. Those suck. <laughs> like, why do you have them? <laughs> why do you have these weapons? If you're specifically like, if any, look, if I was like, hey, just pick, take anything out of the fridge. And then you grab something, you grabbed a can of something. I was like, actually, those suck. Don't take those. It's like, well, you let them pick and you put it in your fridge. All right. Why'd you put it in your fridge if you know it sucks? And don't give him sass about it. He wanted them. And I get it. They're like, why would you have a blunt object? But he's like, oh, I'm a big, strong boy. I'm a big boy. I'm a strong boy. All right. So it's it's fine. I'm just saying, don't be a dick about like, pick whatever weapon you want. You put it there. Why'd you put it there if it was a bad weapon? They're... What I'm saying is the gargoyles, they don't know what they're doing, all right? Sometimes you're like, oh, there are these holy warriors and good for them. And other times you're like, these guys are dweebs, okay? They don't know what's going on, okay? He's broody. This isn't the thing about Aaron Eckhart in this movie. He didn't know, like, what to do. So he's just like, I'm just going to brood for 90 minutes and uh, we'll, we'll make it work. So that was the direction. It's fine. You got, here's the thing about frankincense monster let's call him adam because that's the name they give him in this all right adam he's out here he's a tortured soul he's got complex emotions all right he learned he's he, this is the thing this is the biggest problem with frankenstein that everyone gets wrong because in the boris karloff movies he's like he's like a toddler he's like a big kid you know it's like oh he's not very smart and he has strong emotions and in the books he's hyper intelligent and has emotions, and is big and strong, you know? So it's like this cocktail of like, oh, but also he's hideous. So he gets rejected by society, okay? That's the whole thing about Frankenstein. He spends his time, he grows close to a family by listening to them. That's how he learns English. And then he's like, hey, I, look, can you help me? Like, I, I just want to be, a, I want to be a part of something. I want to be part of society. And they're just like, oh, hideous monster, get rid of him, you know? So that's part of the reason why he's so bitter, because he's rejected, Okay. <sighs> Anyway, he broods in this one. Whatever. It's fair enough, all right? I'm just saying there's more dimension. I want Aaron Eckhart. This is the man who screams about Rachel and his two-face. I know he can do it. But this one, he was like, I will brood, and that's all you get. I have gotten through none. Look, he's got a dirty face, and he doesn't clean his face. And that's, if you got a dirty face, you got to clean your face off, okay? But then his face is clean a little later, so whatever. Also, Bill Nye pours himself a, a cup of tea. And drinks it immediately. You gotta steep your tea, bro. He's British. He should know this. He should know better. All right. All right, Cody. I hear you. I hear you, Cody, but I'm gonna need to start my five minutes, all right? So I'm gonna need you to stop talking. Here we go. First off, he's not British. He's a demon prince, all right? That's so how dare you insinuate that he would know anything. He's from... Uh, the down under all right he's from australia so he's not british okay is he part of the british empire that's not a thing anymore cody so he's not all right so boom okay look bailey she's lied to me and at this point all right cody because she's like she's always like as long as there's a dumb love story and a kiss she's happy there's a dumb love story and a kiss and nobody wants to be a part of it but that's the whole thing with bailey that's what she wants that's what they gave her that she's like no i don't want it I don't want it. Get some consistency in your life. Get some consistency in your life, Bailey. That's what I say to that, all right? Cody, this movie, what you don't understand is that this is, this is what Mary Shelley saw as a continuation. <laughs> this is what she intended as the continuation of her brand, all right? She's like, I want him to be brooding, all right? Here's what you don't understand, okay? You could own the steel book of this movie for 10 dollars cody it costs you 70 dollars to own the steelbook of dracula untold and that is unfair all right so cody here's what i'm gonna say i want you to look into my eyeballs and i want you to stare into them stare deeply into my oh gosh i got it all right amazon let's talk about you constantly wanting this stupid one-time password all right here's everybody here's my one-time password two five nine <laughs> five three seven so if you can get into my 
if you know my uh, my email and my password to my Amazon, you can get into it for the next ten minutes. Okay, that's that's my gift to you. Okay. Uh, so here's I need you, to, Cody. Look back into my eyes. Okay. There it is. Wait. 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 Wait, there it is. I bought it. I bought the Steel Book of I Frankenstein. So suck it, Cody. That's what you don't even understand. It was ten dollars, Cody. Okay. He picks up the sticks, and they're like, nobody can wield those. They're too heavy, Cody. Even the gargoyles with their weak little dinky little wing arms, they can't do it. They're playing Aladdin and Once Upon a Time. They're sleek bronze boys and they're beautiful and we need them in our lives all right but they're too weak to wield these sticks and he's like i'm strong all right now you look me in the eye and you try to tell me that shelly did not envision him as being very strong cody that's what i thought that's what i thought cody he's a strong boy he's a pretty boy but he's an ugly boy all right you look at you know what cody when i sit here and I look at Aaron Eckhart, the first thing that comes to my mind is hideous monster, all right? You know, then you put some stitches across his face, like some really <laughs> half-done stitching. And you know what? It just, it, it adds, all right? You put some, you know what, Cody, we're going to add some eyeliner. You're saying his face is dirty? I'm saying his face is a patchwork of rotten flesh, Cody. He can't clean that up. The flesh is rotten. He got eyeliner, though. He got lots of time to apply eyeliner. What's he been doing for 500 years, 200 years? Eyeliner. That's what he's been doing for 200 years. All right. Let's. He's there. He's with the girl from Chuck, like you said, a TV actor. Cody, what I'm saying is you're wrong, but you're not wrong. All right. He got the abs for days. Here's what I want to know. Frankenstein, Dr. Victor Frankenstein. All right. Why did you use so many different pieces for the skin? Okay, here's... Okay, I know I'm not supposed to tear apart the movies, but let's talk about this. This is what I hate for every single Frankenstein's monster. Why is the body made out of so many different bodies? <laughs> why? Why? Wouldn't you just use one intact body and then maybe different organs? Why did you needlessly chop people up and then stitch them into one perfectly cohesive body? Okay? Why? Okay? Why did you not just use one body, different organs? All right? It drives me nuts. I could see it if he had the why, like the little, like the thing that they cut into you when they take out all your organs that makes sense or maybe an entire arm why are there these crazy patchwork scars all over his body why does his skin so smooth why are his muscles so big why does he look too old to have muscles this big so his skin looks weird stretched across these big muscles in this old body why does he have so much eyeliner oh tyler i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to cut you off right there um look there's a reason for the bot, okay? I forget, okay? But they talk about it, all right? This is this is this is what everyone doesn't. This is what everyone forgets about Frankenstein, Victor Frankenstein, Doctor Frankenstein. He's a madman who's out here grave robbing for bits and pieces. Now look, think about this. Consider this: you're a science student, natural philosophy, as they say in the books. Okay, you're a young natural philosophy student. You're out here doing science experiments. You're like, I have this great idea. I'm going to reanimate a human body. You go out, you go to steal a corpse. Here's the thing. That corpse is missing a leg. Now what do you do? Huh? Exactly. You got you got bits and pieces, all right? This is how this is how the world works. You don't get a pick and choose. Look, when you dig up a fresh body, all right? You don't get a pick and choose what it's got and what it's missing, okay? You know what I'm saying? But but I'm saying, how many people are buried that are missing their leg? You know what I'm saying? Like in those days, most of them. All most right? people are missing their leg. I can that. But what about those people days, missing Everyone's half their missing chest. something. All right. All right. That's what. What about people missing half of their their oh, chest? Most of the deaths back then from cannonballs. You get hit in the chest with a cannonball. You you got to pick part of your chest. You what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I had I had not thought about the fact that most deaths were cannonball related in those days. Ah, mostly, yeah. 
Can we talk about the genius of this tagline, Cody? This, I, comma, Frankenstein, 200 years later, comma, he's still alive. That's the movie's tagline. Wow. So okay. good. The cover is so cool, here's, though. Here's my thing about Frankenstein. They specifically say, they're like, Victor Frankenstein? That was just a story made up to scare children. I would like to rebut that. Because Vic, Frankenstein's book... This is not a child story or a grim fairy tale or a kid's book. This is like adult level reading book. There's vocabulary. There's complex ideas. This is not a kid's story. It's not some spooky scary. This is not, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's I know not what you're what saying. It do. Thank you. It was her trying to write a horror movie, a horror book. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. But what I'm, here's my rebuttal. The uh, the movie posters. There's a set of movie posters. You know how they do where they like feature the individual characters. Mm-hmm. Where there is one that says "good," and it has a gargoyle in gargoyle form. Yeah. One that says "evil," and it has the demon prince in his demon prince form. And then there's one that has Adam on it, and it just says "immortal." So he's not good or evil. He's just immortal. But aren't the others immortal as well? It says. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Well, they're immortal. Yeah, <laughs> I guess they are. I'm trying to think of the justification, but it's like the demons have been around since the war in heaven, <laughs> like since since that happened, and the yeah. gargoyles also, and they're only killed if you kill them, which I think makes you immortal, right? <laughs> like, if you can only die if you're killed you just live on forever until someone actively kills you that makes you immortal right right well you, you, i don't know man look we, here's the problem with movie posters all right the movie poster lobby they don't want you to know this you know they're out here they're the middlemen we don't need them all right they don't even know what's going on they're making look they didn't even take the time to watch i frankenstein to understand that everyone there is immortal all right that's what i'm saying so we got to burn it down right to your congressman we got to take down movie poster lobby you know what i'm saying they're leeches they're leeches on the industry am i wrong stop me if i'm going too far here no i mean i think you're going i don't think you're going far enough i think the movie in poster industry is the gargoyles no they're they are the immoral what are they (laughs) evil (laughs) they're the evil (laughs) um i've got a quote for you i think bailey said it and I want you to, I, I haven't seen this movie in a bit, so it's been a week or two, so I forget what it's from. I'm just going to give it to you. You tell me where, who it's talking about. Oh, he's more Asian than I thought. He has a very toit face. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it? Maybe, maybe was it one of the demons in the middle fight scene when it's like him with his sticks? More Asian than I thought? Well, there is, <laughs> there is a a few asian characters or maybe it was the gargoyle side. was it one of the gargoyles i think it was one of the gargoyles like he shifted and you're like oh i didn't think that's what he's gonna look like i don't know uh, yeah i mean there's one that's like i'm looking at a picture of him right now he's just straight up he's very asian or native american like now that tell me about of... his face would you describe it as toy it is toy it does look toy it does yeah i i can <laughs> see exactly <laughs> what it. she's trying to say if it's there the guy go. that i'm looking at there you go you cracked it uh, okay. I did, look, you talked about his muscles. You talked about, I'm assuming Aaron Eckhart's muscles, is that what you're talking about? Yes. I did, I've got a note for you. Maybe you can decipher it for me. It's, oh, daddy. That's right, definitely when I'll he say. took his shirt off. <laughs> here's what I'll say. I think Aaron Eckhart has got a great physique. Like, he's got that perp, he's toned right, he's not too bulky, he's that lean, that lean, taut boy. I got respect for that. But where's the... No, that's the, all. I think he did a oh, great okay. job. I think he looked okay. great. I think, um, I think if I like had to bot, if someone was just like, hey, do you want what perfect body? What do you want? You know? Well, Someone, if I could transform my physique, I'd be like Aaron Eckhart, I Frankenstein, minus the scars. You know? As far as like, I think he's toned just right. I think he's got the right levels of, of everything. 
I think the problem wrong? comes from it's the makeup, which you, they have to put like a layer of fake skin, but they did it so weird. Like it makes him look like he is so ridiculously shredded, <laughs> but there's mm. so much fake skin on him that he's just, he's plump in weird spots. That's what I'm, I think what's getting me. It looks like somebody who is shredded with a layer of fake skin on them, which is exactly what it is. So I'm sure that fake skin is also trying to, they've also sculpted it to try to make him look more shredded. But when he's already mm. looks like a freaking monster from his muscles to the point where it looks like it hurts. It looks like he's having like <laughs> stomach cramp convulsions. Like he's in pain yeah. from these muscles. And they're like, you know what? Make him veinier. <laughs> Make people think, is that a scar or a vein? That's what I want people yeah. to think. You know, that's what I think is going on here. Basically, I'm saying it's perfect, and they should have gotten an Oscar <laughs> for it. Look, if if Suicide Squad can win an Oscar for this stuff, then I think they should have won an Oscar. That's what yeah. I'm saying. You know, I hear you. They hear re ya. they reanimated a dead rat. They reanimated a, a person. They almost they kind of reanimated some people, you know. I I had a beef, and it's been too long, so I don't remember the specifics. But I did write down that's not how electricity works. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember? Do you want to? You can just pick a spot in the movie. Okay, I just I don't know. Maybe it was the part where they were like, "Oh, he wrote down the right voltage we needed." And you're like, "You guys didn't try all the voltages? Like, you, that it's was a part jewels. of your scientific process." Um, it was the jewels they needed. Here's here's what's interesting about about that. Okay. Something they never reveal in Frankenstein, and like specifically, because the Frankenstein is from the perspective of Victor Frankenstein, so it's like his yeah. journal essentially. Like, here's what I did. Here's what's ha here's what happened. Here's you know, but he specifically says like, "Hey, I am not gonna write down the specific method I used to reanimate a corpse because of what happened." Because of the monster I created, I'm not going to reveal the secret. So that's what's kind of interesting in the book. It's just like, I used science to reanimate a corpse. And it was, it was too scary. It was a terrible idea. So I will not tell you how. But then in like the Boris Karloff Frankenstein, they're like, I don't know. Give him an assistant named Igor. He's going to be an absolute like crazy scientist. And they use electricity, which is like as good as any other reason, right? Like, yeah. sure. But that isn't what, so it's just interesting to me that it's like, it's always electricity. Like, is there not something else? Does anyone else have any other ideas of how they would have reanimated? You know, like the secret that he never revealed. Have you ever watched the Frankenstein Chronicles? It's a show on Netflix. You showed me uh, the pilot. I didn't watch more of it, but it was good. Yeah, it's very good. And I will say, so like there, they play a lot with that you like, because you just assume Oh, it's going to be electricity. Right. And so they play a lot with you like, oh, it's going to be electricity. Well, is it? Like, it's definitely electricity. But it's like during, it's the same as, you know, like they say in the movie. They could, they didn't even know what electricity was, which is, I don't think true. <laughs> I think they knew what it was. They couldn't Look, create this it at man, the level we can now. This man in Europe got electric eels, threw them in a tank, you know. He did it. That's, That's what they pause in this one. When was electricity invented, Cody? When? <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite thing to hit somebody that's like they had invented electricity. <laughs> I'm just asking, when was electricity invented? <laughs> when was it invented? Oh, you know. Man. All right. Also, when did, I, when did they invent gravity? Do you have to yeah, on that one as well? There you go. We, uh... Let's see. <laughs> when was electricity invented? See what Google will say. It says Thomas Edison invented electricity what? in 1879, wow. which is wrong on multiple levels. I think. <laughs> how did how did our brains work before then? It's it's all chemicals, baby. Uh, yeah. So that's not how electricity works, but it's fine. Here's the thing: Can we talk about the real hero of this movie, the real star? Okay. And yep. someone you haven't brought up, and I'm offended and upset that you didn't bring him up. Let's talk about the big black security guard. Okay, let's with talk her about voice, <laughs> with the voice that I look. I'm just gonna say it. It's a hot take. Too deep. 
I, any time he said anything, I was like, we got to get this guy out of here. He can't, it's so distract. It's like two octaves below what any human's voice should be. He's not and a any, human. They gave him, here's the thing. The physical presence totally works. As soon as they gave him a line, I was like, I am taken way out of this. I have so many questions about that man, his life, what it's like to be a family member of his. I couldn't do it. Like, am I wrong? Was it not absolutely distracting? I mean, you're wrong, Cody. And then they just kept giving him lines because once they, once they broke the barrier, once they were like, he, he gave him a line, they're like, might as well give him three or four more lines. Shut the, and then any time it happened, I was like, stop. This is, not, this is not a real dude. But he was there, and I heard it. <laughs> so I figured out. I think I cracked the code of why he is featured and why he was like, because there's lots of pictures of him. It's like, if you were to look at the red carpet photos, it would you would be uh, it would be understandable to think that the three stars of this movie were Aaron Eckhart, uh, what's her face, <laughs> the uh, Yvonne Struskovsky or whatever her name is, and then that guy, like they're the stars of the movie, Kevin something French. All right. And it is because he appears to be a character from Underworld, which is about vampires, Cody. Isn't that fun? That is fun. Cody. Vampires. <laughs> vampires. Which links it to Dracula Untold. Oh, they gosh. all link back to Dracula Untold. Now, I know I'm supposed to link them to each other, so here... You know what? Give me give me a second. Say words. Yeah. I, here's what I'll say. I, I had a beef. And I, it might have been one of the human scientists. I forget. But she's like, I'd rather die than help you. And then like two seconds later, she's like, okay, I'll do it. And I did not understand even a little bit why she even said I would rather die. You know, because then immediately she's like, oh, it's going to destroy humanity. I could never do it. And then she does it immediately. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, but Cody, they killed her friend. So she has to bring him back to life. I don't know, man. Would you, are you saying if you, somebody wanted you to like reveal the secrets to bringing people back from the dead as monsters and then they killed me, you wouldn't bring me back to the life for life as a monster? I, guess I just don't understand why them killing you makes it so I want to do it. It's, it's still the same stick. The stakes haven't changed. They're still going to take over the world. So what did, you know? But also, you... that guy wasn't even cool. Like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He didn't even seem like he was with it. Like He was like, oh, no, I'm one of the good guys. He was kind of just like, I don't know, man. I'm just kind of cashing him a paycheck. So the boss man says it. I guess I'll do it. You know, like one of those yeah. guys. Like the girl's like, it's look, it's the life or death of all of the human race. And he was like, yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm getting paid a salary and I don't want to be a dick, so I'll just keep doing it. You know, you know what I'm saying? But the tea. He pours the tea. Like, they show him pouring it. And it's not even like, oh, it's been a few minutes. They're drinking. He pours the tea and then he's drinking it. Because he likes it When hot. I say pour the tea, I'm saying there's the, there's the teapot, okay? And you see it's glass. So you see, oh, there's the tea leaves. They're in there. They're ready to go. He pours in the hot water, and then he pours a cup of tea, and that's not how it works. We're talking three, five, ten. Some teas you steep for like 15 minutes, okay? So how is he out? What kind of tea is he even? Is it just a facade? Is it? Is he not actually drinking tea? Does he just want people to think he's sophisticated? Like, what's his deal? Like, how did Bill Nye, as a British man, not, like, object and say, you know what, you people... You pe- Hold on, Bill Nye is the villain in Underworld. So how is he the villain in this movie? I just realized. What is that? I'll, I'll give you one better. I think his main henchman in Underworld is also the giant black guy from this world. I, did I see that in the trivia that they were trying to tie it to Underworld origin, like the original screenplay? I mean, that there wouldn't surprise me. The original screenplay, it was supposed to take place in the same universe as Underworld. Back when they were going to be and heroes. And then Kate Beckinsale was universe. supposed to make a cameo as her character. And then there it wasn't used. 
So they were like setting it up that they could do underworld stuff. All right. I don't. The gargoyles seem like they really had the demons on their heels at one point. You know, how are how they not close it out? That's what well, I don't understand. And there seemed to be an infinite supply of demons, but also they were like, we've been hunting them forever, so and I don't understand. It's classic angels versus demons nonsense, you know, where it's like a hundred demons can kill an angel, but it takes a hundred demons to do that. And you can Let never get a hundred to be nice to each other. Let me talk about how garbage these gargoyles are. <clears throat> Bill Nye has built an evil laboratory with like a link to hell or something yeah. the core of the earth or whatever 10 blocks from their headquarters cathedral like and furthermore for some reason like the whole thing is adam frankenstein's creation is there and he's like look i don't want to be a part of this like i'm not part of your war but then he's like okay now i'm mad so i'll, I'll kill a few demons on my own and the gargoyle's like look tear up with us or don't i don't know you're dangerous because you hold you you're the guy Okay, you hold the secrets of reanimating a corpse. Okay. But then at some point, he starts feuding with the gargoyles. So then he's fighting the gargoyles. And then the gargoyles are like, let's focus all our energy on Adam. And Adam has to be like, hey, come and get me. Oh, hey, JK, I'm just leading you to the demons. Will you please fight them? And they're like, okay, I get. The demons are supposed to be... The gargoyles are supposed to be fighting the demons the whole time. Why'd they pivot to focus on Adam for an entire act of the movie? And then Adam's like, hey, you're at your mortal sworn enemy that you're supposed to fight. What was that about? Because Coda, he's the he's the way that they could uh, revive people. For Here's the other thing. Okay, I'll do you one better. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to defend this movie, but I'll do you one better, Cody. They don't know that they're bringing people back from the dead to use as demon vessels until he tells them. And then shows, the, like, takes them there. Before that, they're like, we have to kill you because the demons want you. And that's their mm. only reason. Okay, got it. And it's like... Got it. I mean, I'll agree. The demons are bad at their job. I mean, the... <laughs> Demons are great Gargs. at their job. The gargoyles are bad at their job. But also, this dude's been stockpiling human corpses for hundreds of years, and nobody caught on to that. How's he, how do you preserve them so well? That's my question. Like, that's my question, too. Especially when they're just in sacks, they, hanging yeah, on meat that's hooks. Yeah, thing. It wasn't, like, it wasn't like the Matrix where like, oh, no, they're in an ooze. You know, They're in some sort of a sack with fluids. You know, I, I'd buy that if they were in formaldehyde or something. But it's like, no, they're just, they're just kind of strapped up there. They're in a very much, like, you remember the movie Van Helsing? Mm, yeah. It, it reminded me very much of that, of, like, the, the kids where he's like, I want babies, but they're born dead because I'm undead. Mm. Except it was people <laughs> in weird, like. Mm -hmm. Also, they needed, like, this super hyper-sophisticated system to, <laughs> to bring back one rat. And then freaking... The ultimate B movie actor that he's in every B movie you've ever seen <laughs> manages to rig up some tin foil and rebar to do the exact same thing in the basement. That's what they're trying to say. So basically, oh, I'm saying man. it's a perfect movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and then it seemed like at one point they tried to possess Frankenstein, but they're like, oh, he has a soul. Did they say that? Or did they imply it? And it was like, I thought the whole thing was he didn't have a soul. So then how are you going to rename other corpses? Because doesn't Adam have a soul now? Or So are they going to have souls still? I think the implication that they didn't make very well is supposed to be that he got a soul. They like got granted him a soul. Oh, because he cared. Yeah. Or something. Oh. Okay. Or maybe his will is so strong. Look, I've said a lot of bad things about this movie. The I will say, I will say a good thing about this movie. <gasps> How dare you? All right. When Adam rolls up, and in order to take out Bill Nye, he slices the gargoyle's mark into his chest so that he bursts into flame and is destroyed forever. I was like, that's cool. All right? That was a really cool way to kill the bad guy. I was like, oh, you're branded with the mark. Now you're dead. Yeah. That was great. That was rad. Like, him, shirtless, Good. 
all right? There was some kind of fun action, all right? But the finale, where he carves the thing into the guy and then he dies, was like, kudos. Wait, at least they finished on a strong mark, you know? They're like, hey, we, we've been lost for 40 minutes doing stuff, but here you go. Here's a little something for you. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm on board. Yeah. I did like that. That is probably one of the coolest, like, oh. Because it shows him, like, slashing them with the weapons, and weapons ain't doing nothing against right. this guy. I also feel like, okay, I liked how he made his own little, like, push knife, you know? Yeah. A little boot knife, or whatever it's called, you know? Mm-hmm. But wouldn't, like, if I was him, I would, like, carve that mark into, like, random bricks I find on the sidewalk <laughs> and stuff, you know? like You would have a little stamp that you can just kind of be, like, you know. Let me stamp this, and now it's a death brick. You know, let me stamp this. Which that also leads to the point of, then wouldn't, like, a stamp be the ultimate weapon against the demons? Because you could just stamp them. And they'll burst into flame. No, I got it. You make a demon nightclub, okay? And when you go to the bouncer to get into the demon nightclub, you got to get a little, you got to get a hand stamp. But boom, gotcha. It's the mark. You've been descended. Boom. I did it. I just, look, these gargoyles are out here for thousands of years trying to do this. I just solved their problem at one night. All right? Yeah. You got to do it different, though. You got to do it, like, so that it doesn't immediately get them. That way you get the max number in the club. No, but you come in one at a time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, instead of just being like, hey, you're at the door, bouncer checks in, it's like, hey, you come in. All right, we're doing we're doing our ID checks in behind the curtain right here. You know, like, where the line can't see. That's all you got to do. That's yeah. all you got to do. But how are you gonna? But then they do the little fire thing that goes into the ground. How are you gonna solve that? Pyrotechnics. You make it like a fire nightclub, like a volcano club, or you know, like that's the, oh yeah, yeah. that's they'll, the aesthetic. So it's just like part of the decorations. Because they'll like that. Because they're they're demons. They like the fire. They like hell and lava, brimstone, fire. They love it all. That's true. I'm writing a spec script. You you want to get in on this? You want to get your name oh, yeah. on this? I'll get in on the ground floor. Of the I will. I'll offer you twelve dollars for ninety eight percent ownership <laughs> of the club. Ah, <laughs> oh, so I'm about out of notes. You know what I did see though? I'll tell you this. I'll tell you what? this right now. I saw it in the trivia. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. It's not gonna make sense, and that's why I have to bring it up. They're like, oh yeah, Aaron Eckhart broke his neck doing a stunt because they hit him so hard in the back of the neck with one of the prop weapons. Ooh. I don't know what that means. Like, well, I mean, you, you can, can kill someone if you break their neck, but like, what are the, you know, did they break, did they give him like a hairline fracture on his neck or did he, like, I don't know. <laughs> just the, they just said like, he broke his neck. You're like, right, but how and how bad, you know? I mean, not, obviously not bad enough to kill him. Or maybe it was bad enough to kill him, and they brought him and back re- to life. They reanimated him, yeah. He did it once, but not again. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, look, that's the bulk of my notes. If you want me to give you in summation what I thought about the movie, I thought it was bad. I thought the muscles were good. I thought the way he killed the guy was good. There was some fun action. That's it. It wasn't, like, good. Okay, he thought he broke his neck. How oh, dare you, sir? All right, lame. Yeah. So that's I don't know. That's those are my thoughts. What am I missing here? I need you to. Why do you like this? I why need you to I, sell me on this movie? Why yeah. do I like this movie, Cody? How is you, ugh, Cody? Is a perfect film. Okay, you've got uh, muscles. You got mm. Cali stick fights. You've got flying stuff and fires all right you uh you got the kiss you know what more do you need okay who kisses are those the two are the two gargoyles that are like i love her she's dead and now i can be with her and you're like oh, is that that one is that a kiss doesn't frankenstein does it uh, adam kiss what's her face it's been too long you know he, they kiss they got a kiss right oh but yeah that's nice there was those two gargoyles that loved each other there was that that was fun just wasn't fake. it? Cody, don't tell me it wasn't it's fun. Like gargoyles should have been better at their job of fighting the demons, you know? Because the demons didn't seem that good. 
at fighting. And the gargoyles had weapons, and the demons just had, like, hands with long nails. Yeah. And they're like, our numbers are doing Like, how many gargoyles are left? Is it just, like, literally just those dudes in the tower? Because Bill Nye has got legions of demons all across the... He's got laboratories set up all across the world. Oh, yeah. I mean... So who's got... <laughs> yeah. Look, Cody, you trying to tell me you've seen one movie or read one book or seen one show or something where it's not like an angels versus demons kind of thing where it's not like a billion to one angel characters are outnumbered and they're all like we don't know how it got to this point we started with the same number of people and it's like maybe because you suck that's what i'm saying like they're out here they can fly they can be human form or gargoyle form and they have weapons and the demons are out here killing them but to be fair, the gargoyles have to like kill, like stab them. It appears that all the demons have to do is touch you on the back. It's very much a <laughs> freeze tag. It's like a okay. I got you now. Here's here's how the demons win. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the tables. All right, we got the demon nightclub to kill the demons. Now, demon massage parlor for gargoyles. You make it look like a cathedrally thing. It's like, hey, look, we do we got a nice service for you. We'll give you a massage. Boom. They got them on the table. They got them in their, in the nude, in the buff. All right, get the massage towel on them. Boom, take them out. See yeah. what I'm saying? I'm Just saying with them. with the power of business, I could take out either of these organizations. Well, so that's the thing. The you know the demons have a giant business, so maybe that's how they've killed so many gargoyles. Just what you said. The, gargoyle massage parlor touch them on the back of the head or back of the neck or something dead nah. dead dead their blood is also like light so you know they also seem to die from very not deadly wounds it's like if you get got you got got you know doesn't matter how much you got got you get a little prick on the finger done. let me tell you you're done you let me tell you one of my favorite action scenes is when uh so when they got Adam, I think it's towards the beginning, they got Adam chained up, and the main leader guy is like, oh, they're coming in. And the demon crashes through the window, and then he jumps backwards and up in the air and slashes the demon. I was like, whoa. It's pretty cool. Yeah, It's, it's no. kind of like anime kind of action they're going. You know, it's very stylized. And I get it. It's like from a graphic novel, right? Yeah. Which is some t- fun action. I guess, but it's just like the stakes kind of lost me. You know, I didn't, I wasn't as invested as I needed to be. And maybe part of it comes from the broodiness of Adam. You know, I just, I wasn't like super rooting for him. I was like, yeah, he's out here. Whereas like in the book, you do feel so much sympathy. Like that's what I love about Frankenstein, the book. If you haven't read Frankenstein, the book, definitely do it. It's a little slow. The first like 20, 20 pages or so are pretty slow, but it picks up. So that's what I love about it is that, it's such a good moral conflict where you're like, oh, Frankenstein? Because he's not a madman. Like, he kind of has his mania over his, like, science experiment. And then once it's over, he, like, realizes the mistake he's in, right? So he's he's got a woman that he loves that he wants to marry. And at the same time, he's got this creature that he created, and it comes back to haunt him, and he hears his story. You know, I just, I love that, like, there's no right or wrong thing, right? He made this monster, and the question is, does he make a companion for it? Should he be compelled to make a companion for it? Should we feel bad for Frankenstein because he was rejected by society or does it not matter because Frankenstein's monster killed people? Like it doesn't, you know, like does he deserve love? Does he deserve companionship? Or does he, you know, is he really evil or is he just misunderstood and rejected? And if he had a companion and he had something to be a part of, would he be a good person again? You know, or is he, you know, so that's like what they're struggling with back and forth. And that's what I love about it is that it's such like, a high concept and you feel sympathy for both characters and you see both their perspectives. Um, that's what's so great about Frankenstein. It's a very complex narrative. And um, this movie, he just brooded. You know, I didn't feel that same like, oh, I understand him and I feel bad for him. But he is a monster. But he isn't a monster. And this one, it was just like, he out here and he fed up with these demons but he also yeah. doesn't like the gargoyles, you know? Because he's he doesn't even want to be a part of their crew, Cody. He's so cool. He doesn't want to be a part so of the it. The thing is, like, what is he even doing, though? You know? Like, he's like, he's, I'm not a so, part of society. 
The dog girl's like, you want to hang with us? He's like, eh. And the demons are like, hey, we could use it. He's like, eh. Is he just like an emo loner guy? You know, that's my thing. I don't. Look, Cody, he's doing his own thing, and you need to respect that. Right? Well, for how long? He's been doing it for like 200 years. Yeah. Is he not like overdoing his own thing, you know? I mean, he never, he, look, if these people would just leave him alone and stop what's, hunting That's my thing. It's like, what's his motivation? It seems like he's kind of just caught in the middle. So he's like, I guess I'll fight because these people are annoying me by fighting me. I don't know, man. Yeah. I just don't know. I didn't, I didn't peer into it, you know? Yeah. I mean, what do you Have want you me to say? You're not wrong. Have you read Frankenstein? Have you read it? No. Of course you not. Yeah, check it out. That's pretty good. It's still it's Never. a little spooky. It's a little spooky. It's a little spooky. But it's spooky, not though. you know, it's spooky because it's so well written. That's what makes it kind of spooky. You're like, oh But Cody, it's written by a woman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know I can't read things written by a woman. Here's what I'll tell you. If you do read Frankenstein, you're gonna get confused. Can you be like, what does he do? Why does he keep talking about natural philosophy? It's old timey language for science, okay? When you hear an old timey person saying, that'll look, that's your biggest hurdle in the book, is trying to figure out what they mean when they say natural philosophy. And I just, I solved it for you. I told you, they're talking about science. Old timey science is natural philosophy. Because old timey scientists were just like, a rock weighs the same as wood, so they're. This they're equal in energy, you know. That's it's just their reasoning, all right. They're just reasoning things, and they're like, when I push this over, it falls. Science, you know, that's all they're doing. Yeah, they're putting people in vats of eels. They're collecting electric eels. <laughs> vats of eels. Put, putting people. <laughs> Where else are you going to put eels? You don't got a vat. You don't get any eels. I mean, let me tell true. you. Let me tell you the most scared I've ever been in my life. All right, here's what you do. You want to get spooked? Go to the aquarium, find an eel. They are horrifying. Have you ever seen like a big eel, like a 12 foot long eel at oh, yeah. a zoo or whatever? It's like looking in. You know, it's like looking into the eyes of of a dinosaur, where it's just like, if you were in this water with me. I would eat your brains. Like, that's what it's got. And the thing is, too, sometimes they hide. And you're like, what's that little snaggle tooth in there? Like, oh, eel. And it, like, slides out at you. Terrifying. Oh, Horrifying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, I'd give this movie about a D. How dare you, sir? <laughs> it is at about. least a C minus, all right? <laughs> that's what you need to know. <laughs> it just, I couldn't recommend it. I don't think I could. But it's so good, Cody. I don't think you're right about that. But Cody, how could you not love this movie? That's what I need to know. Look, if you like it, I have to dislike it. I mean, sure, that's true. I didn't make these rules, okay? You came on here, and I have to say, look, you can't have nice things. That's what what we know. And I can't give this one to you. But so what you're saying is you loved it. Let me talk to you about Frankenstein some more because okay. I love Frankenstein. Okay. And it makes me so mad. Igor, what's he doing? Why does he exist? Why is he a thing? He's not in the book. Okay. Here's the thing. They want to roll up in the movie and be like, he's a mad scientist. He's a mad lad. And like, no, he's just a youth that went too far. And he doesn't have an assistant named Igor. Why did they add Igor into the movie? You know, not this movie, the old one which is now a thing. Like, they created Igor out of... They pulled him right out of their butts, okay? <laughs> they were like, in the book, he doesn't have an assistant or anything. Should we just, like, add one in? Yes. Should be a hunchback guy? Yes. Why? Yes. And that's it, you know? It doesn't... It don't make no sense. The only reason Igor exists is so that Mel Brooks can parody him in... What's the movie he did? Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. All right, Frankenstein. that's the only that's the only good thing that came out of that came out of Igor being invented. All right, I said it, I did it. So I don't know. It's a great book. It's a delightful book. It'll touch your heart. It'll spook you a little bit. It'll make you think. So uh, read Frankenstein. That's all I got to say. 
I'm trying to find like the reason behind Igor in the beginning here. Um, originally, the character's name was Fritz. What? He did not originate from the Frankenstein novel. Did you know that? But instead from the earliest recorded play adaptation. Oh. So is it literally just, that's what makes, that makes me think, is it literally just like, we need another like strong dude on stage to help move this thing after this scene. (laughs) So we need to give Frankenstein. Should be. I mean, I get if they add characters because there's really like three characters in the book, like, yeah. three main main characters and then there's like a few like side characters like oh yeah no his professor is kind of there but not even really a little bit and his, some of his family members are there like that's it you know and then there's the people that frankenstein's monster interacts with so there aren't a ton of characters so i get why like what what okay i have i found more details um so no okay so this is the third and fourth sequel where there's a character. Okay, so no, this is later adaptations that have Igor, where it has Igor as a dude that is not a lab assistant. He's a blacksmith with a broken neck and twisted back from being hung. What? That he reanimates as and like lets oh. loose on the townspeople who want to hang him for grave robbing. Oh, uh, yeah. People, people are not too fond of the grave robbing. Let me so, tell you. It really seems like it was just there's a play and they probably needed an extra body on the stage for some reason. And they're like, let's just make up a lab assistant character for him. Well, because otherwise, because the whole book is his journal, essentially. So I get why it's like, we need dialogue. So let's get someone else on stage so we can can have dialogue instead of just Frank. Because otherwise it would just be him saying like, all right, let me just narrate literally everything that's happening. Yeah, it would give him somebody to explain stuff to if he had like a little scrappy little assistant (laughs) yeah and someone to ask a question that everybody's in their mind and be like no stupid Mm -hmm. also here's what you need to know cody i can connect this movie to dracula untold in two all right so you got kevin grevo 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 who is in animal crackers with ian mckellen who is in the hobbit the Battle of Five Armies with Luke Evans, who is Dracula. Oh, Daddy Dracula. Yes. So, wow. like I said, they all link back to the OG Tyler's Trash movie, the best Tyler's Trash movie. I'd give this one a C minus. How dare you give it a D? So it's, far below what it deserves. I don't want to watch it again, you know? Like, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I didn't buy this movie. I signed up for a Peacock membership. <laughs> oh, you watched it on Peacock too? Oh, yeah. But I didn't want to watch say, ads. Of everything we've watched on Peacock, um, or on, on like streaming with ads, this had the least aggressive. Like, it was like four sets of ads. It was only like one or two ads each. And I was like, oh, this, that was not. And like the volume wasn't upsettingly loud. I was like, you know what? That wasn't too bad. I would do that. I would watch a movie on Peacock again with ads. Oh. Well, you don't have I didn't to. Hate, I didn't hate myself afterwards is what I'm saying. Whereas normally yeah. I'm just like ripping my hair out by like the halfway point of the movie. I'm like, why? Why did I not spend $3 to save myself the hair loss? You know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, Peacock, you're all right. You know, sometimes they can be right. All right, Cody. Now... In lieu of forgetting to do it and having to come back and film another thing. Are you going to the machine? I'm, I've got the machine. I yeah. have the machine open and ready for business. Uh, do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. What okay. is it? Lockout, which is a movie uh. that, uh, all right, just to, okay, here, let me get you. Do I need okay. to Give this a quick jujal. No, no. I got you. All right. Is this one I need to go in blind on or what? Like, what are you doing? Uh, what are you I've, doing to I've me? got the, the tiny little the plot synopsis, the small one, not the like 
eight paragraph one that's always right below the small one. Yeah. A man wrongfully convicted of conspiracy to commit espionage against the U.S. has offered his freedom if he can rescue the president's daughter from an outer space prison taken over what? by violent inmates. <laughs> Hold on. Everything you said was like, oh, this is like an episode of 24. And then you said in space. <laughs> when did space? Hold on. Nothing you said indicated that this was in the future until they just threw the word in space in there. Yes. All right. There's more details that will come Lockout. out. Lockout. Lockout. Is there anything else I need to know about this? I mean, I think it's better if you don't know some things about it until after you watch it. Can it, I know it, who like who who's in it? Like, do I get a? Is there anyone I would know in there? Guy Pierce. <laughs> is it a Guy Pierce sci-fi action thriller? Yes. Sci-fi action movie. Yes. Wow. It is on Guy IMDb. Pierce. Have you seen any TV? of Guy Pierce's music videos? No. Let what? me tell you. It might be a little late to do it because you might get nightmare. Like you're gonna get some weird nightmare fuel. But definitely check out Guy Pierce's music career because there are some music videos. Like it looks like if Tim Burton's Willy Wonka was like, you know what? I think music is what I should do instead of chocolate. That's kind of the vibe you get from it. Okay. I've got one that's playing. That it just looks like him with a guitar. Well, darn. There's like some wacky music videos where he does like a bunch of different characters and, you know. Yeah, this is just him in a field with a guitar. <sighs> you lied to me. Is he at saying. least in space? No, no. But he's wearing a vest. Is it at least like a sci fi vest? No. Lockout. It's a regular wow. old vest. Lockout. Well, I look forward to divulging you know diving back into that dump with you you know oh yeah here's the thing i got another one um it's just him on a weird sound stage with a guitar right. with, there it oh. is weird but there's other people it's not him a bunch of times i feel like you lied to me i didn't i seen it uh, okay i think i see you i think i see it i think i see what you're talking Okay, now I see it. Now I see what you're talking about. <laughs> there you what go. Is, There's the face I was waiting for. What is happening? It's a man <laughs> trapped in go. pantyhose. Help yeah. this man, Cody. Uh huh. All right. What's that so, song called for the listeners? Uh, his body. I have not his heard body. a single note of the music. I'm just watching it, which is oh, how I would. You gotta hear the music. But I feel like it's definitely better without the music, right? <laughs> Maybe. I'm watching this. I'm thinking it's the real compliment no of a music video is when it, when it's better without the music. Am I right? <laughs> there you go. It's not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> All right. Well, so we're doing lockout next. That's a goodie. It's a goodie. There's some controversy around it, Cody. I'll come. I'll come with all the controversy details. And you I'm ready. know, I am ready. Yeah, you better be, boy. You better be ready, boy. boy. So, in, in conclusion, Cody, you love this movie. You think it's an A+. Plus. I think that's a little generous. I think this is at best a C. Or maybe... I just, a, want, you just know. want more people to read Frankenstein. And I want, like, a good Frankenstein movie made. Like, Guillermo del Toro was supposed to make one at one point. He was attached to it. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. And then it didn't happen. And I'm sad to this day. Watch Frankenstein Chronicles. All right. I mean, and I you will, it okay. will explain to you why it's a bad idea to make a very faithful. Like, I don't think that would make a great movie. I think it makes a very well done indie TV show. Yeah, it'd be a good miniseries, like a three or four hour miniseries. Where it's like, hey, we went hard on it. Here's three, three or four one hour episodes. Like, there's so many things that if I would just spoil it and tell you, you would be way into it. But it'll be so much better if you just watch it without me spoiling it. I hear you. I mean, it's hard with the televisions, you know? I gotta watch the Beatles documentary. I'm behind on Marvel TV shows. I never I never watched more than four episodes of Better Call Saul. You know, like I'm just I'm a but bad Cody, TV boy. How many of those are based on source material written by women? <sighs> wow. Um, those are, that's a good question. 
So I'm hitting you with two facts here, Cody. One, if you hate this movie, you're a sexist. And two, if you don't watch Frankenstein Chronicles, you're a sexist. All right? That's two ways that you could oh, avoid being a sexist by loving Gotta... this movie. You're right. You're and by right. watching Frankenstein Chronicles. All right. You're right. Uncancel yeah. me. I'm on board. Okay. Uncanceled. I will send the letter. I will notify the council that you are to be uncanceled effective immediately. Oh, feels good, you know. Well, Tyler, you want to take us home? I do. I do. I'm going to close out. On this. Okay, close out my YouTube before it starts playing another one of Guy Pierce's songs. Um, well, Cody, I I don't know the outro. What's that? It's been too long. What is say, it? Say, thank, say thanks for listening. The, oh, thanks for listening. Uh, it, Tell them where they can it, find us. Oh, you can find us. Uh, Cody lives in Kansas City. Tell them to write I moved to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> you hunt us down if you want to. <laughs> or you can you listen to us on all the podcast services. Rate us. Spotify is apparently letting you rate stuff now, so rate us there. That's what all the other... Oh. Oh, Everyone else is saying rate them on Spotify, so I'm saying rate us on Spotify. Don't right. rate them. Find your favorite podcast. Don't rate a single one of their podcasts. Right. Go to our podcast and rate all of them four stars. Don't give me five stars. I want four stars because that's believable, <laughs> okay? Then people know you actually thought about it when you give them four <laughs> stars, all right? Yeah. Everybody goes to Amazon. Well, they're not reading those five-star reviews. They're reading those four and those three-star reviews. You know what I'm saying? That's true, yeah. Anyway, listen to us on all those what about, things. What about social media? Uh, we're on Mastodon. We're on TikTok. We're on uh, Twitter. At Opinion Havers. Instagram. At Opinion Havers. Facebook. Because Cody wants to be part of the metaverse. He wants Zuckerberg to love him. So he only does Facebook stuff. Oh, sorry. Met, meta stuff. Tweet at Cody. Tell him he's a coward. Tell him he doesn't tweet about our stuff nearly enough so that i have to tweet it follow me at tyler d bergstrom don't follow cody cody doesn't even tweet about our episodes coming out i tweet about the episodes all right because <laughs> cody he won't tweet about them when we upload a new one all right that's why i refuse to give cody a single new episode until he tweets about the show all right so twitter instagram and myspace myspace right <laughs> is that it is that all the spots cody they got it. They'll find us. Just Google us or something, right? What happens if you Google us? Let's find out. All right, here we go. Opinion havers. Gosh, I misspelled opinion. We're right. Professional opinion havers. That's not what it is. If you get... Oh, we come up on Apple Podcasts. There you go. Boom. Nailed it. Um, uh, until next... Oh, thanks. <laughs> I already said thanks for listening, Cody. Until next time. Watch, uh, watch movies, watch Frankenstein and have, and have opinions. Nailed it. I feel like I really nailed that outro. <laughs> you know, when you're like writing an essay, the night it's due <laughs> and you're just, you're just BS in your intro where you're like, oh, I got so much to say about this topic. I'm going to blow your mind with the essay that's about to come out about the topic that I'm writing the essay about. That's the to, outro. I loved it. I need to find a way to put your name on stuff here because I've Googled it. It just says my name on all of them. Yeah, that's true. We've only got two memes on Instagram, you freaking slacker. Here's the thing. I can't get locked in. I don't know how. I don't know how to fix it. Wait, 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 wait. I can't fix it. Movie podcasts don't get any whiter or any freer, mm-hmm. freer than us. Got it. Get it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Stand it, please. Okay, fine.